I know. It's been... I'm gonna flash it on the screen. This is how long it's been. <laughs> okay, I know you guys have been waiting for this, so screw this intro. We're just gonna get right to the dino video right now. Sports for actually recording that video. I was at work at the time and I actually wasn't able to be there for the actual dyno session. So I did miss out on that a little bit, but they were kind enough to take that video and supply it to me. Um, now it was taken over Instagram. So, you know, hey, I apologize on the little low level quality with that video, but I have the numbers right here. So we're going to go over exactly how much my C6 Grand Sport LS3 car actually had made on the dyno over here, camera operator. Very smooth operation though. Okay, so first thing I want to touch on, I want to touch on my graph. On this graph, here, let me, let me get that from you now. So on this graph, there's a couple of key proponents. So as you can see, he started this pull at probably about 2000 RPM, which the car is uh, certainly not in its power band here. So unfortunately, the dyno graph doesn't actually show the horsepower numbers on the side of the graph here to correlate exactly where it starts or where exactly it is at uh, 3K RPM. The blue curve right here is obviously the torque curve and the red curve here is the power curve. Now, since we don't have the numbers associated with it, we can make a couple of assumptions though. The car makes peak torque right around 4,900 RPM and it stays relatively flat as you go through there. So that means that is the car's real power band right when it starts to make the most power. But if you watch the horsepower curve through the entire graph here, you notice it does not lose any power through the entire curve. In fact, it's actually making peak power right at around 6,900 RPM. So um, the car is actually revving out to a max of 7,000 RPM right now, meaning that you know that's right around peak power for this car. All right, so finally we have the actual numbers graph here. So let's kind of touch base with what it made numbers wise. Now, a couple variables I wanna get out of the way before we actually go into this so you guys maybe understand where your cars might similarly dyno here these are the specs of my cam i'm just gonna put a card right up here the car is basically cam only it has headers and only an intake really there's not much done to this car right now um, the entire top end has been built up it's got you know lifters it's got springs you know all those kind of good goodies that you have to include on your car when you cam it right when you put a big old cam in it so that being said let's also go over you know how hot was it that day? The humidity, you know, let's just be anal like that, you know, because, you know, it's, it's for the boys. What? What? We're, we're not gonna... <laughs> that being said, it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon. It was 93 degrees out, so not terribly hot, actually, for Arizona. Not so bad, right? Um, humidity, though, humidity was 35%, so pretty, pretty thick for AZ, you know? You don't typically see AZ hit that high in humidity. As you know, humidity does affect horsepower a little bit here. These numbers are all SAE correction factor, so it's not on some weird pattern that people aren't used to. Generally, that's what most people go off of when they look at dyno graphs. Okay, here we go. And here is the dyno graph here for my vet. And here is all the numbers here that you see here. So as you see with the corrective factors here, this is the SAE corrective factor here that you see here. So that's the factor they're using to correct it here. So using non-corrective factors, it made 460.9. With the corrective factors used, it was 497.2. Again, that's with SAE scaling there. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what goes into that, but you know, just being really transparent here. Um, the torque factors here looks like it made 383 with the non-corrective factor, 413 with the corrective factor. Now the torque was actually lower than where I thought it might be, which you can feel a lack of torque under the power curve here, right? Because what you're essentially doing when you cam your car is you're shifting your torque curve up, right? For the most part, when you go for a big cam. So essentially the car made just under 500 wheel horsepower, which is fantastic numbers for an LS3 Corvette. It certainly moves like that. Again, you could see right at 6,900 RPM as well too, is where it's making its power. Uh, the car was obviously dynoed in fourth gear as well too here. Uh, fourth gear is a one-to-one -one gear ratio on the C6 Corvettes as well too, so. Now this was also done on a Mustang dyno. You know, you guys have your uh, speculations between which dynos are 
more powerful, which one's dino higher. Generally, this is more of a heartbreak dino, or at least I'm told, who really knows for sure. But what I also wanna do is I wanna compare the numbers before and after the cam. So then we have a really good idea of what we're looking at. All right, in an effort to also farther clear up the internet clout numbers, you know, when you dyno your car, you know, it's like, oh, my car made this much with this much power, it's sick, right? Really the only way you can measure dyno numbers in the most efficient way is to see what it dynoed at before and after. Now these were at the same dyno. It is a different day. I'll go over, you know, what the humidity, what the temps were and stuff the last time this car was dynoed but it's gonna be the best way to compare how much power my car actually picked up after we put the big cam in it. And that is the only change in mods on the car here, right? And that's apart from the other internal bits that you put into it, you know, again, the lifters, the springs, all that kind of good stuff. It did not get any other bolt-ons to the car, just cam only. I'm gonna give up on trying to place the sheets on the Corvette, that's too hard to do. They're just going on the ground now. Okay, so here are the side-by-side -side sheets here. This sheet right here is before the cam. This sheet right here is after the cam. Now notice before the cam, it was actually in a more favorable setting here. And that's why you see the correction factor a little bit lower here. So you'll notice that the temperature here was 76 degrees and the humidity was only 16% here, right? Versus the, uh, the temperature 93 degrees here with the cam and 35% humidity. So what we can assume with this correction factor as well too is that these correction factors are taking in account for the higher temps and the higher humidity here. So, so with these corrective factors, it's basically giving you the same conditions as if you were to do it the same day, right? So now let's look at the numbers. Okay, so as you can see before the cam, the car made 431.8 horsepower here to the rear wheels, and then it made 403 0.4 wheel torque. So comparing that to the other dyno here, this one made 497.2 to the rear wheels and 413.3 to the rear wheels. And because they were corrected to basically similar conditions, this is pretty accurate to show exactly how much the cam picked up right here, right? So if we're comparing this directly, the car actually picked up 66.4 horsepower from a cam only. Um, now torque wise though, the car only picked up just under 10 pound feet of torque, right? So actually 9.9 .9 pound feet of torque. So this cam ain't so great on the torque side. Again, what it's probably done is it's shifted a lot of the torque over so it actually makes more power, which is what you commonly see happen with big cams. So I hope these side-by-side -side comparisons here make sense to you. I hope it gives you basically the most light as well too. You'll see exactly what that BTR stage four cam does for your car, or you can generally assume that it would do for your car here. <laughs> really you're gonna walk up and zoom in on it yep okay guys so those are the dyno numbers for my cam only c6 ls3 corvette let me know your thoughts below let me know if you think i'm stupid for some reason because i'm sure there's gonna be someone out there on the internet telling you that i'm stupid what else would you like to see me do on my c6 ls3 to make it a little bit faster i do have something in mind it is sitting in a box somewhere uh, i don't think i'm gonna be doing it anytime soon but who knows? That being said, even though it is, oh wait, it's October now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even though it's October in Arizona, it is still 95 degrees out. I don't have a whole lot of wants or needs to go and beat on this car in the heat here. So we will have a separate video dedicated to more of the um, beating on, the reaction, and just the overall speed of the car so you guys get a sense for it. Also, I will be at the Omega Motorsports No Fly Zone taking place in Gila Bend in Arizona, October 15th. So we're gonna do some side-by-side, -side, half-mile racing on an airstrip. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I will document how my car does, obviously, the entire time. I actually have a supercharged three-valve Mustang calling me out on that. So we're gonna have a little side bet on that. Uh, kind of embarrassing if I lose because I sold a supercharged three valve. This one's a little bit more cracked out, a little bit more try hard like, but you know what, whatever. We'll respect it if we lose. I don't know if we will because uh, it is quite a bit faster now with the big cam and you know it revs to 7,000 RPMs, which is just cool, you know. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like my content, feel free to leave me a like or subscribe to me down below. Again, more videos are coming of this C6 LS3 Corvette. I'm hungry now, so I'm gonna go get some food. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.